Welcome to Indian Council of Medical Research Online Prescribing Skill Course 2020 for Indian Medical Graduate. I am Dr. Kamlesh Garav from VMMC and Savdajing Hospital, New Delhi. I am going to talk about how to prescribe before referring a case of myocardial infarction and acute coronary syndrome. After viewing this video, please answer 5 multiple choice questions which have been given in assignment section and give your feedback also. This module is prepared by myself, Dr. C.D. Tripathi, Dr. Samir Gulati, Dr. Rupali Malk and it is reviewed by Dr. Nilma Sagar and Dr. Sadeep Kaushal. Learning objective of this module for Indian medical graduate is that you should be able to distinguish between cardiac and non-cardiac chest pain. Causes of non-cardiac chest pain may be gastric, respiratory, orthopedic or musculoskeletal. If it is cardiac chest pain, you should be able to identify different conditions of acute coronary syndrome, management of the case accordingly and timely referring the patient to higher center. In this video, we will discuss why this topic is important, what is expected of Indian medical graduate, case scenario of the patients presenting with acute coronary syndrome, what are the diagnostic and treatment algorithm, certain do's, don'ts and what is the take home message. Coming to why this topic is important because acute coronary syndrome is a medical emergency and the incidence of myocardial infarction in India is about 6% and mortality from these is approximately 30%. Now next is what is expected of Indian medical graduate as per medical council of Indian competencies. Indian medical graduates should be able to perform document physical examination, distinguish between stable and unstable angina, acute myocardial infarction order and interpret ECG and cardiac marker. He should be able to manage the relief of pain in coronary syndrome patients and timely refer the patient for admission to coronary care unit. If we look at the case scenario, the elderly patient present in emergency with symptoms of severe crushing retrosternal chest pain at rest, breathlessness and excessive sweating. In this case, patient's relative gave the uh, history of acute severe chest pain 2 hours ago followed by above symptoms. She was given antacid but the pain was not relieved and then they rushed to the emergency. As soon as patient of chest pain comes to you after ruling out the non-cardiac cause, immediately put the patient for ECG and simultaneously call the ambulance if you are sitting in primary or secondary healthcare center. If you are sitting in emergency department of a tertiary care hospital then immediately rush the patient to cardiology department in super specialty block. You can order your nursing staff to take blood samples for estimation of cardiac markers, especially troponin T and troponin I, which are very specific and sensitive markers of myocardial necrosis. Now, making a diagnosis on ECG, look for ST segment changes or development of cardiac arrhythmia. You can also electronically consult your medical specialist or cardiologist to confirm the diagnosis on ECG. If suppose in first instance there are no changes in ECG but the person still has chest pain then ECG can be repeated after 30 minutes. Now suppose by this time you have ECG as well as cardiac marker reports in your hand how to distinguish between ST elevation myocardial infarction and non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. ST segment will be elevated in ST elevation myocardial infarction and cardiac enzyme will be raised almost 20 to 50 times. Whereas in non-ST elevation segment MI, ST segment will not be elevated and all the cardiac enzyme will be just start detecting in the blood because normally they are not detectable and physiological level of troponin level range from 0 to 0.4 nanogram per ml. Understanding the overall diagnosis of cardiac chest pain, patients of coronary artery disease may present with stable angina. These patients, they are more common and they can just be treated by glycerol trinitrate. Another important presentation is acute coronary syndrome. That is, patient may present with either unstable angina or present with non-ST elevation MI or with ST elevation MI. So, unstable angina and non-ST elevation MI, they both are called non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome. The only difference between unstable angina and non-ST elevation MI is cardiac markers are raised in non-ST elevation MI, but they are normal in unstable angina. But if the patient present with both ST elevation in ECG as well as cardiac enzymes are elevated, then it is a case of ST elevation myocardial infarction, which is really an emergency and you will have to rush to coronary care unit for reperfusion. One thing you can put in the diagnosis of severe cardiac chest pain is aortic dissection. Aortic dissection patient present with similar presentation of acute severe sudden chest pain but they can be differentiated from acute coronary syndrome having unequal peripheral pulses in all the four limbs. 
Then talking about the pre-hospital care of acute coronary syndrome patient which may be taken care in the ambulance also, all the patient whether ST segment is elevated or not just rush to coronary care unit and on the way watch for ventricular arrhythmia. If there are any ST segment changes or ventricular arrhythmia then they can be reversed with the help of defibrillator. Coming to the drug management of acute coronary syndrome, as long as patient is with you, there are two mainstay of treatment at your level. First you will have to relieve the pain with the help of drugs like morphine and glycerol trinitrate and then secondly you can give antithrombotic therapy in the form of aspirin, clopidogrel and atorvastatin or you can give fibrinolytic therapy or anticoagulant therapy in the form of streptokinase and heparin. First and foremost drug which you will administer is chewable aspirin 325 milligram. It has to be chewed not to be swallowed to ensure buccal absorption. Certain guidelines also recommend addition of tablet clopidogrel 300 milligram and atorvastatin 80 milligram along with aspirin. While giving this regime bleeding in the patient should be taken care of. Next drug which is to be administered is morphine sulfate 2 to 5 milligram IV which may be repeated every 5 to 30 minutes maximum up to 15 milligram. It, it should be cautiously used in the patients of hypotension, respiratory depression and confusion. Third drug which need to be administered in patient of ST elevation myocardial infarction is unfractionated heparin with the initial bolus dose of 60 unit per kg maximum 4000 unit followed by infusion of 12 to 15 units per kg maximum up to 1000 unit per hour. Next medication which is to be given is injection streptokinase given by intravenous route 1.5 million units over 1 hour. All this thrombolytic and fibrinolytic therapy needs to be taken care if the patient has bleeding during the therapy or there is any history of bleeding. Patient chest pain can also be treated by glycerate trinitrate 0.4 milligram every 5 minutes maximum up to 3 times. This drug can also be given by buccal spray but during this drug you will have to take care of the hypotension. Coming to the overall algorithm of management of cardiac chest pain, when a cardiac chest pain patient approaches you immediately go for ECG and simultaneously call for ambulance. If you are suspecting ST elevation MI then you will have to just rush the patient to admission to coronary care unit for reperfusion. There are certain do's and don'ts for the management of cardiac chest pain patients. Such patients should be put on bed rest. They are strictly advised not to walk or climb stairs. They should use either wheelchair or stretcher. Ambulance should be called, ECG should be done, EC, any ST segment changes or ventricular arrhythmia should be looked for. Simultaneously blood sample for cardiac marker should be sent if facility is available. If acute coronary syndrome is confirmed then go for pain relief therapy, anti-thrombotic therapy, fibrinolytic therapy depending upon the condition of acute coronary syndrome and facilities available. While shifting the patient ECG should be monitored and ventricular arrhythmia should be looked for and if they happen defibrillation should be done with the help of defibrillator. Coming to the don'ts, the major don't in management of acute coronary syndrome is there should be no delay. No delay in shifting the patient to higher center after managing the patient best at your level. Same is with the take home message, there should be no delay in transport of such patient to coronary care unit. These are the references we have used in preparation of this module. We are very thankful to all our experts, reviewers and our UMC members in giving their expert opinions and valuable inputs. Thank you for watching this video, hope you are now ready to solve MCQ, please access the assignment section and submit your answer. Also please complete the prescription evaluation as per tutorial which I hope you have already seen. Thank you and happy learning.